Hey guys, I've got this HP Omnibook 7 Flip 16 Laptop AI. Yes, that is the name officially of this product. Uh, and I don't think I've seen a lot of stuff out there about this particular model revision. It's kind of a, a newish revision and there are some decent differences here. So I thought I would put together a quick video, a first look with some pros and cons. This is going to be very hastily edited, uh, poor quality as you've ever come to expect from this channel. But I'm going to give you my personal professional opinion of what is good and bad, my initial thoughts on some things. And uh, maybe if you're looking to get one of these, you'll, you'll get some uh, value out of this. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about my personal pros of this product. I really do like the sturdy, attractive aluminum case. I mean, this is a, a nice case. It's above the grade of your typical Envy uh, or, you know, it feels more like a Spectre. But actually, in fact, it, it kind of also borders what you would expect from the business grade side of things, which I really enjoy. I mean, that, that's one of the things that I like so much about this. It's a much more practically designed overall, I think, consumer product, despite the fact that it isn't it isn't business grade, it's consumer grade. So that's a plus in my book. Uh, I really like this case. I enjoy the fact that, as you can see here, this kind of chamfers inward. It's, it's kind of got this like angle to it. It's really soft. Even these edges here are soft. They don't dig into your legs or your palms or anything like that. They're very, very nicely rounded. Uh, and this area here makes it really easy to pick up. So you can kind of, I mean, it's, it's well balanced. It's not a lot of weight to it. Uh, but it just feels good when you pick it up. It feels good in the hand. It feels relatively sturdy. It's hard to twist, at least like this. Uh, so that's a big plus. I think uh, the pros definitely include the build quality. Next thing is it really has a beautiful OLED display, uh, and it is bright, and it is reflective, uh, which we'll come back to that in a bit. It's a 2880 by 1800, 120 hertz refresh rate. It is a variable refresh rate, 48 to 120 hertz display, a uh, 120 hertz display. Um, and it really does look good. It's, it's very, very vivid, as you would expect from OLED. Obviously, the blacks are completely black, clearly. And, uh, you know, it's an infinite contrast ratio because the pixels are actually off on an OLED when you're not when you're not powering that particular pixel. So the, the display is a huge plus. I really like it a lot. Uh, the one thing I regret is how reflective it is. And I'll come back to that in a bit. We'll talk a little more about that. The next thing is it really is a business grade design in a consumer segment. So, you know, whereas you would normally get a limited port selection, mostly consisting of Thunderbolt and USB-C ports, this laptop actually has a stunning array of ports, even though it's a 16 inch. It's got not one, but two USB-A ports, which is kind of crazy already. And this, obviously, this 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack is pretty rare these days as well, if you like that sort of thing. HDMI, USB-C 4, USB -C 4 Thunderbolt, and then USB-C uh, not Thunderbolt. So that's nice, though, to have these. I mean, there's two of those, and you can charge through either one of them, of course. Uh, but on top of that, you've also got the conventional USBs, which a lot of people still use. I mean, that's still something that is heavily used. So I really like that, but not that's not all. It, that's not the only thing. It also has, sorry for bumping the camera there. It also has, uh, you know, really e relatively easy maintenance, which I'll, I'll show you in a second here, uh, as well as a camera shutter up here at the top, like a little tiny camera shutter, like you'd get on like the Elite Books or the Z Books. It's very unobtrusive, but it does its job. Uh, these are all things that, you know, you only normally see in the business segment. It's pretty rare in the consumer side. So I, I, I think that's a plus too. Okay, next up, we've got a brief look at maintenance here. Uh, those of you who appreciate being able to get inside your machine will like the fact that there are actually only four screws. They are Torx screws uh, securing the rear cover to this machine. This one up here is captive. It does not come out. The other three do come out. However, it's kind of difficult to get this cover off, so don't be fooled. It's not as easy as it looks. It's definitely not like business-grade sensibilities here in this respect, but you have to kind of pry. By my estimation, the best place to start is up here near the captive screw, which kind of pops this loose. You kind of come this direction and just sort of work your way around it. Once you get the top part separated, though, you can kind of just carefully pop this off, and it just kind of disengages all the clips, and then you get this for the internals. And as you can see here, you've got a few things that are that are replaceable or that are maintainable. The first, obviously, you've got your fan and your heat sink, relatively easy to get to. Typical screws there. You've got your WLAN adapter, uh, the battery, of course. And it's nice that there aren't any like plastic trenches for cables and things like that around the exterior of that, like there are in some laptops. So it's pretty easy to replace that. Um, try to center this up for you. And then, of course, you got your SSD, which is maybe the most important thing of all. Let's see what we get here underneath this heat shield see what model that we got in the SSD model lottery. As you can see, you've got this 
compound here to help with heat transfer as usual. Just very carefully work this loose and let's see what we've got. And this is a Micron 2500, one terabyte. I've definitely seen worse. Uh, so anyway, yeah, relatively easy to get into, except for the disengaging of the cover around the perimeter. You do have to be careful with that. You won't be able to do it without some sort of tool. Uh, very carefully, of course. You don't want to you know, work too diligently with it. Um, I don't think you're going to get it with plastic. I doubt it. I mean, they tell you to use plastic scribes on a lot of these. I have a lot better luck with these really fine, really thin metal opening tools in this case. You just got to be really careful with it. The next thing that's definitely a pro is the performance. This is the top-end Intel Core Ultra 7 258V CPU. It is basically the most powerful Intel Meteor Lake CPU of this segment you could find. Uh, it is a 28-watt uh, TDP CPU, and it does have pretty powerful integrated graphics, despite the fact that they are, in fact, integrated. Uh, it is the, as you can see here, the Intel Arc 140V GPU. It does have shared VRAM, of course, uh, but the VRAM is, you know, it's a lot. It's 16 gigs of shared VRAM. Speaking of memory, this particular configuration comes with 32 gigs of DDR5-8533, which is pretty darn fast. I mean, this is, it, it is soldered. You cannot upgrade the RAM. You cannot replace the RAM. So you might consider that a, a negative, but there are not a lot of laptops these days that are this thin and light that allow you to do that. So that's not necessarily surprising. Probably the only thing that even comes close to that uh, to being sort of this portable is like the Elite Books and the Z Books. They do still have modular RAM, which is pretty uncommon these days. So, that, I mean, it's a powerful setup here. And then, of course, your SSD. This may be a lottery here. This one in particular is a Micron, uh, which I'm happy with. It's pretty uncommon to see, you know, the Western Digitals and the SanDisks, I think, in the uh, HPs, which I have been pleased with because I don't like those very much. And let's look at some of the uh, some of the benchmarks really quickly here. If you want to just take a look at those on the screen, I've got Geekbench CPU. Geekbench, GPU, and Crystal Disk Mark for anybody who's so interested. But the bottom line is it, it performs very well. It's it's very quick. Uh, and that kind of segues into my next pro, and that's the quiet, cool operation pretty much all the time. This thing almost never is that audible, if audible at all. Like right now, the fan is not running. Uh, you can't hear it. And unless you really stress this thing, it just doesn't turn on. I mean, even running Geekbench, it wasn't even hardly audible at all which is pretty impressive. So you'd have to really stress it a lot to, to make it a loud and warm machine. I mean, even it only gets lukewarm in this region, definitely comfortable on the legs. These are all big pluses in my book. And then the next thing is the speakers are actually quite good as well. They're not, I mean, the low end reproduction isn't fantastic. It's not going to match like a, a MacBook or whatever, but they sound really good. And, you know, you expect that, I guess, maybe in a 16 inch model, but the volume exceeded even my expectations. I, I, I consider that to be a valuable thing, especially, you know, from a practical standpoint. Again, this being a consumer laptop, uh, it's got speakers that are as clear as most of the business grade laptops, really good for video conferencing and that sort of thing. And the last thing on that note, again, not ta not too far from the rest of these, is that the keyboard and the touchpad are also quite good. Uh, the keyboard doesn't have the key travel that you get with the HP premium keyboards and the ZBooks and the Elite Books. That's an awesome keyboard. That's probably, by my estimation, amongst the best keyboards that exists right now in a mobile device. And I really mean that when I say it. Probably the only competitors really are the very high-end Dell laptops, like the previous Latitudes that have now morphed into the stupid terminology they call the pro whatever premiums and things like that. And the MacBooks, of course, they have very nice keyboards as well. But these are all, th this is a very good keyboard. Touchpad as well, it's quiet. The clicks are defined, uh, but they're not uh, noisy. Um, that goes with the keyboard as well. You know, the, the typing is quiet. Uh, the feedback is very good. The travel is short. It, it, you know, that's what lacks based on um, when you're typing, you immediately notice that. It feels more like an Ultrabook keyboard, but it feels more like a really high-end Ultrabook keyboard. Uh, and finally, I do have to mention that I really appreciate the fact that it's a dark colored set of keys with uh, white lettering so that when your backlight is on on the keys, it doesn't obstruct your view of it in the day. So that, that's a big plus too, because a lot of these laptops in recent years have opted for like more blending colors, and that's not very practical. All right, so for some quick cons here, and I've only got five of those versus the seven pros, uh, the hinges are a bit wobbly. I mean, this is not something you're going to notice when I'm using this thing, probably, but I'll try. Um, you know, when you're typing, when you're when you're sitting somewhere that's particularly bright, you'll notice that it does wobble. Uh, it's specifically noticeable when you're doing any kind of video conferencing, which I'll show you here in a little clip. And this is the integrated webcam, which actually is quite good. I'm not sure about the audio, so you'll have to let me know what you think. I'm outside right now, and it's pretty windy. Um, and you can hear a lot of birds. I'm not sure if you can hear those. 
here. Let me know what you think. So yeah, the webcam and the and the photo quality is pretty good. Uh, the audio quality is decent. I mean, the uh, the noise isolation seems good. It seems like it does a pretty good job of isolating the the voice from everything else in the environment. So that's a plus. But you can see the wobble there if you move even just a little bit, or if there's any wind in your environment, which is a pretty big negative, I think, if you're using this for any kind of video conferencing. Uh, on that same note. The uh, the screen is reflective too, and I mentioned this earlier. And obviously, you would expect as such just this sort of thing with a, an OLED display, but it's very reflective and it doesn't really have any reflection dampening effects, uh, which is something you see on some of the other really nice models like the Samsung Galaxy Books, which have their own sets of negatives, of course. But it is really something you get used to is having that that special coating on the display that spreads the reflections out, despite the fact that it's still vivid and still glossy, which I think is kind of like the best of both worlds in some respects. Number three is really brief. I'm not going to show you anything else about this because I showed you earlier when I was taking the thing apart. I should have mentioned it then. But despite the fact that it's predominantly metal construction, it's still not on the grade of an Elite Book or a Z Book. It still has like a plastic bracketing lining a lot of the internals where the screws screw into. And that could be a liability if it gets bumped or mistreated in just the wrong way and you wind up in a situation where you've got like a break in the plastic bracket. Uh, the keyboard as well is plastic spot welded to the case, so you can't replace that. So it's not quite high-end business grade, but it does feel little more like it than you know your average uh, laptop in this segment con number four is something that i think a lot of people agree with me on but other people will probably think is silly and that is that this is a convertible and it's 16 inches and let's be honest who in the world is ever going to use a 16 inch convertible i'm like i'm not trying to be mean or anything like that hp i know it's cool to, to have these products marketed like this but this is just silly and i feel like you could have gotten a lot more mileage out of this design if you had not had these 360 degree hinges maybe they wouldn't be quite as wobbly as well uh you just be able to do a little bit more with it and it wouldn't be as you know as compromised in that respect sure maybe it doesn't subtract a lot from it overall if you don't ever use it as a as a two-in-one who cares if it just gets used as a laptop but i mean i kind of feel like manufacturers need to stop producing these huge giant two-in-ones and then the final con, number five, is really a minor one as well. That's that these rubber feet, while I do like the fact that they're very large and they feel like they'll never come off or detach accidentally like some of them have in the past, uh, don't really do a lot to keep the laptop stationary on a surface. As you can see, it really slides around probably more than is comfortable for a lot of people. Uh, depending on the surface, of course, if you're on a, a surface that's got a little bit more friction to it, it, it'll keep it still. And it does better than not having them, but it certainly is not as good as, you know, like your old, uh, you know, like your actual rubber strips, like on these XPSs. These are much grippier. You can just feel the difference in grippiness. And if you try to slip it around, it doesn't move, whereas this does. So I hope this very brief introduction to this new model has been useful to you if you're looking at getting one. Uh, this is not something I'm going to be able to revisit very frequently because this is actually a machine I purchased for a client that he's going to be picking up very soon. Uh, but you can get it right now if you're interested, and it, the price is quite good with these specs. It's got the, the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, like I mentioned, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, and the one terabyte SSD. It's available at Costco currently. Oh, and with the, the, the display too, which I believe is an upgrade, the OLED is, uh, at Costco for, for basically $1,000. And Costco, of course, also carries the benefit of giving you, it gives you the extra two-year warranty versus a one-year, which is what you typically get. And if you buy it with a credit card, most credit cards, of course, extend the warranty further by another year, depending on your credit card. But most of them do that now, which will give you three years of coverage, which is basically business grade with the exception of the fact that it's not on site and maybe of the same quality of uh, coverage. But I mean, that's nice. It's a really nice peace of mind to have when you're purchasing a thousand dollar machine. And really this thing probably should cost more than a thousand dollars. I would say, you know, 1200, 1300 is a reasonable price for this in most cases. Uh, if you can get it for a thousand, I'd say that's a steal. So maybe take a look at that if you're interested. And I hope you've enjoyed this. If uh, you subscribe, you'll see more of this kind of stuff just sort of randomly on no sort of schedule. And I'll talk to you in the next one.